Hi, I'm Glenn. Thanks for joining in on this tutorial. We have something really special to show you today. This is a project for some high school junior students and it comes from a school in Sydney called Cranbrook. So a big shout out to all those students. Thanks very much for sending in uh, the plans for this project and I really enjoyed drawing it up. It's a super practical job. It's a storage box, but it has, wait for it, a laser cut acrylic plastic face which is screwed on and it has the feel of something that will be around the home being used for a long time. With a 3D or isometric view we can see lots of sides all at once or we can draw them separately. This front view is what I would see looking there, side view from that direction and the top view would be looking straight down. They're called orthogonal views. I wonder instead of drawing that corner close if we could make a drawing with the other corner closest towards you. Let me try and explain what I mean. If your technology teacher was standing in front of that corner looking directly on, um, there's a long and short side of the box. The right arm would be pointing to the long side and the left arm to the short side. Let me show you what I mean from the top. Our drawing will need to be short on the left and long on the right from the starting point. To get to the starting point come across 130 and then up 30 millimeters. Bring the splat down and draw three lines to give you the right angles. I'm going to draw this half scale. I'm halving all the measurements. Extend a line out to the left and then mark off 100 millimeters. Extend the line out to the right and instead of 100, find 112. There's my 100, 110, and two more makes 112. We need a line that goes vertically or straight up in the air. So use the splat angle there to help draw your vertical line. On the left, same deal. We're going to line the edge of the splat up, slide along to your mark, and draw your vertical line. Now they're not long enough, so we're going to need to extend those using your ruler. Remember to draw really light lines. A lot of these will be erasing later. Mark off 45 millimeters in height. Remember I've halved all these measurements. Instead of being 90 on the plans, we're drawing it at 45. Connect those lines together to find the top edge of the box. And to complete the box, uh, that's not going to help. Rotate the splat around and line it up with the one you just drew and use the center splat line to get the angle for the back edge. Rotate the opposite way, line it up with the corner and mark in that angle. Now we'll extend those. How long? Too long. Always draw them longer than you need them, but lightly. Choice. Now let's go have a look at the plans. The base is 12 millimeters thick. Remember we're drawing at half scale. So we're going to extend some lines down and we're marking off half of 12, which will be six. Now we're joining those marks together. And I think you can see pretty clearly that that is the timber on the base. All right, let's have a go at drawing the piece of timber that's closest towards you. We're marking off 10 millimeters along those lines and joining them and that's our piece of timber except we also have to mark off the end grain so I'm marking off 10 mil there and dropping a line straight down. Now that would show what's called end grain and we represent it sometimes with these curvy lines these arcs and that comes from the fact that if I was to cut a tree down and that's the end of my piece of timber, that's where the little curvy lines come from. It's the growth rings in the tree. And on the face, we're just drawing some timber grain. Okay, we're doing the opposite at the back. We're coming forwards by 10 millimeters, and then we're going to join those to draw in the far piece of timber. All right, that's looking really good. Now we're drawing the short piece in between. We measure off 10 and 10, and join to the line. Awesome. Now let's check. 
Remember I said before, if you had the corner towards you, if we've drawn it the right way, it should be the short to the left side, and on my right arm, I should see the long side. And that is correct. Let's go ahead and complete this top of the box by marking off the fourth piece. Next, rotate the splat upside down, and in the center, draw a vertical line. Now we're going to need to extend that down. How far? Remember it was 45 millimeters. At the bottom of that line, we need to draw two more isometric lines. So we'll keep the splat upside down and mark one, two, not quite long enough. Let's extend that. Great. Here's some more uh, wood grain markings on the faces. Don't get too carried away with the knots if you like to draw those. All right, let's have a look now at a rebate joint. You can see how this um, side piece that we've drawn needs to extend into the wider pieces. So I'm extending that line and the other one. Let's just go all the way for the moment. Now, how deep is the rebate? Let's mark off five millimeters, five on the other line, and then join together. I'm going to need to redo the line on my end grain. That's the new line, which means I'm going to have to erase that one there. I'm guessing five mil there, but over the other side, I'm going to mark off five with a ruler. Either way, let's join them together. Here's a great trick using paper as a mask to preserve a lot of the lines and rub out just the ones that I need to. Now I'm coming back over my light lines and I'm firming in. What happens here? Well, let's have a look down this end. It looks like an L shape, so I come along, down and across. That's the one that has to go. Again, I'm using the paper as a shield, removing the line I don't need, and then firm in. Here's some tracing paper over the top. I'm planning how I'm going to draw my uh, acrylic face, the piece of plastic. I could slide out on that angle and draw it out in space. So that's called an exploded view. It's great for showing how parts fit together and if I wanted to show the wood grain behind. There's some reflections showing a piece of plastic with four holes. I could actually slide um, again on the isometric angle out and draw in the position of the screws. I've decided to draw it assembled. So in each of the corners, I'm going to extend a line on that isometric angle outwards, and I'm going to mark off half of the three, which is one and a half, let's call it two. Let's make two millimeters on each of those lines. It doesn't need to be super accurate because they don't build objects from these drawings. They use the um, orthogonal drawings. So let's join all of those marks together now. And what we've drawn is the acrylic sheet of plastic. Uh, it does mean that I'm going to erase and then redraw those lines unless it was clear acrylic and then you could probably leave them in. You probably even see the wood grain behind that as well. Your teacher will also show you the option of using a steel ruler to drag along those corners and shave them off what's what's called a beveled edge. Right, I've marked the centers now of the holes to drill. But what angle are those ovals or ellipses on? Well, use the splat for a guide and draw a smaller version on each of those center marks. Let's think about what type of fasteners you could use. Uh, one option may be to use what's called a countersunk screw. It goes in on an angle, it means that you'll have to countersunk the hole, but the head sits completely buried inside the plastic and leaves a really neat finish. You can get them in brass, get them in steel. Okay, I've drawn some guidelines and I'm having a think about the lettering that I'm going to apply. Uh, here's an old Cranbrook name. I've picked it because it's got four uh, letters only. It's going to be easy for me to do. 
start off by sketching the letters and then just come back and thicken them up. So let's draw three lines and one near the middle, maybe a bit higher. The trick is to keep your vertical lines vertical and the other flat ones follow the isometric. Curved ones like the O um, are best boxed in. Now come back and thicken up each of the letters and you can add little serifs if you want the old school look. If I was planning on a logo, let's just use a square as an example, sketch it in. You could use the isometric angles of the splat to tidy that up. How about an ellipse or an oval? If you want to use the little one, keep the bottom of the splat roughly level with the bottom of the page and that's the angle for drawing in these ellipses. To make the plastic uh, look thick, then slide it up and to the left and draw the far edge of that. Pretty cool. What about the square? Well again, isometric angle, then copy another vertical, copy that one, Dunsky. Now the rendering. So we're colouring to make it look more 3D and to show the materials. So I'm using a brown pencil here and I'm roughly coating it and I'm doing one piece at a time and keeping my lines going in the same direction. Here I'm using um, a sharper pencil to outline all of the pencil drawings into brown including that little bit that you'd see through the laser cut holes. Redoing my um, wood grain. Next, to make your drawing pop, you're going to need light brown next to dark brown. So I'm putting my darker brown on the inside where it's getting less light. You can fade off towards the bottom if you want. Okay, I'm using the eraser to put some cut through marks there and I'm making them more contrasty by adding some dark lines beside it. Those make it look like it's a glossy um, finish. I'm using an art marker to run a colour straight through there and uh, come back and darken it up in the sections that you've cut out. Let's add a material to the bottom. Let's use plywood. It has lots of layers going in different directions. Uh, just bringing up my lines again. Thick and thin lines too make a drawing look really good. I'm adding a little bit of yellow just to make it look like it's a, a different um, material. Darken up your lines around the outside and you're done. I really hope you enjoyed drawing this project and that you keep on drawing. Don't stop designing and send me some ideas. Thanks. Bye.